a few ways to safely take a picture of the sun. The easiest way, the way I captured the solar eclipse last year, is with a white light filter. This is an inexpensive solar film that you can just place in front of your camera lens or your telescope's objective. While it's pretty cool to see sunspots and the moon passing in front of the sun, a dedicated H-alpha solar telescope lets you see the sun's surface in detail and incredible solar prominences. This is where the Skywatcher Heliostar 76 comes in. It's a dedicated solar telescope that isolates the narrow wavelengths of light needed to see the hidden details of our star. Using something called an Edelon filter, this telescope is tuned just right to be able to view and photograph the sun in amazing detail. Now you might think having a telescope designed for doing one thing sounds a little off, but there's a lot of activity going on in the sun at all times. Sunspots, filaments, prominences, they're all happening in real time. It's always changing. The views through this telescope are pretty amazing. The experience of staring at the sun's surface up close while feeling its heat is kind of surreal. It also just feels crazy to be doing astronomy during the day. I can see why people go so nuts for it. Don't get me wrong, I love solar imaging. It's just, it just gets so hot. Oh. As for capturing the sun with your camera, the process is similar to solar system astrophotography. It involves taking short videos of the sun and stacking the best frames into a single image. I even tried making my first time lapse of a solar prominence at the edge of the sun, but we'll get back to that in a minute. Solar photography is all new territory for me, and I'm really just learning as I go along. Skywatchers sent their dedicated SolarQuest Heliofine mount along with the scope, and so far that's the only way I've used the telescope. This made it a lot easier to get up and running because this mount will automatically find and track the sun for you with a push of one button. While this seems super straightforward, the learning curve is real. All right, setting it up for the first time, Heliostar 76. I've got it all ready to go, ready to bring outside. This is the Solar Quest Sun Finder mount. And then I'm gonna use my laptop and fire capture with the ASI 585MC planetary camera. So a color camera. Yeah, we'll see how this goes. I, I feel like this is a better option than using the ASI Air. I can have better control of the camera and the frame rate and all that. So I'm gonna bring the puppy outside. Let's try out this Solar Quest mount for the first time. So, as far as I know, you just press power. Got the batteries in there. Oh, all right, we got no power. Well, that explains it. It requires eight AA batteries. I only had four in there. Okay, okay, now we press power. All right, I see the little red light on. Here we go. It's doing some GPS work right now. I'm assuming something's happening right now. Did not expect it to point and turn that way. <laughs> Maybe I have it set to the southern hemisphere or something. So I realize what's wrong, and maybe you do too at this point but it could happen to anyone, right? I've got the scope on there backwards. So the scope has to be on the side facing the little camera. Go figure. Could happen to anyone. There we go. Now I know. What do you think? Cool. Can you see it? I can see it. It'll be hard for you to see it. It seems to work better from this side. But. Oh yeah. Man, it just barely fits in that field of view. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing we're realizing now with solar photography. Unless you have some sort of cover, you can't see. It's so bright out here. It's like we're staring at the sun or something. You like looking at the sun? 
Yeah, it's very detailed. Like the proms and everything in here are really noticeable. You should have your sunglasses on. <laughs> now that I've had the Helios Star 76 out a few times, I'm getting better at the entire process. Here are some of the most important things you need to know about using an H-Alpha telescope like this, especially if you're using it for photography. The Helios Star needs to be used with the included diagonal for it to be safe for solar viewing and photography. There's another filter in there, so don't even think about using the scope without it. As you saw earlier, I started using this telescope with a color camera just because I wanted that wider field of view. I wanted to get the entire disc in a single image. But as my audience was quick to point out, a monochrome camera is best suited for solar photography. They can record a much better signal and color isn't really much of a factor in solar imaging. I'm using a mix of software to record and process images of the sun. And it seems like this is a pretty common road to take. I use fire capture to control the camera and record the videos and a combination of Auto Stacker and Registax to process the images. These are both free and it's all you need to get the most out of this scope. I took the process even further using a PixInsight plugin called the Solar Toolbox. While I'm just getting my feet wet with it, I really enjoy the colorization tool along with the prominence sharpening slider. So using a free tool called Auto Stacker, I'm going to open up one of my sun videos you can see these are some recent ones here. Here's four of them. It shows the size of them. We'll pick my 1920 by 1080 version. Uh, so a lower frame rate captured with the ASI 290mm mini and a thousand frames. So I will open that. And then this is our image here. And then I can control click an area that I want to tell it to focus on for the stacking and aligning stage. So I've got that open and auto stacker is a bit weird with the, it's just two floating windows. So you have to get used to that, but uh, you can go through the frames you have up here and it's dancing around. So there's that my thousand frames and we're just going to pick the best ones to stack. So the first thing you do is you click analyze, make sure you're on the surface for the sun here. And then it's going to uh, analyze the frames and you can see the progress bar there. So the resolution of this video is pretty big. The 1920 by 1080 is actually huge for this type of photography. Normally you'll wanna do that region of interest, smaller like 600 by 600 pixels. That'll make this whole process faster and your frame rate will be better and you'll get a better section of the sun. But I just wanted to get this huge area all at once. So there we go, we've done the, uh, we've analyzed it and then we see our quality graph. So you can see it starts to dip kind of at 50%. So we could really stack up to 400, 500 frames uh, and they'd look pretty good in this image. So I'm going to, in the stack option here, I'll do three, I'll do 350 frames. We're gonna stack out of the thousand. So, uh, you know, under 50% and that window keeps disappearing. And then, uh, so the last thing we need to do here is place the AP grid on this window here. So place AP grid, and it's gonna add all these crazy boxes to the surface of the sun. And now we're able to stack. So I won't do any super resolution, any drizzling or anything to make it bigger. It's already a huge image. And I'll press stack and I'll um, jump back in when we open up the file in Registax. Okay, the stack is finished and we'll open it up here in Registax 6, another free software and I'll go to select and let's see. Okay, so this is where uh, the folder I've selected where it's going to export the image or output. And uh, this F350 is the dead giveaway that it's the image we just did because it's 350 frames. It's kind of a unique identifier if you, if you can't tell which one's which. I always say no to stretch intensity levels. That's kind of a default window that pops up. Okay, here's where it gets really, really fun. So in these wavelet sliders on the left-hand side here, we're gonna move layer one up to, I've been, you know, this is all to taste, but I've been cranking it up to 50. And then the second slider up to about 20. And now, so you, you can see this, that it's applied it to this little square here. 
and then just say do all and then it'll apply it globally across the sun. Look how much sharper that is. You know, I could have went even crazier too, but to me, that's a huge improvement over that blurry image. Okay, so I'm going to save this and I'm just gonna save this on the desktop. Sun demo. And then we're going to open it up in PixInsight. Now this is, PixInsight is a paid software, uh, but I wanted to show you this tool, the Solar Toolbox. So if we open up our recent image, Sun Demo. This is amazing, wait till you see this. So in the uh, process here, I've added a plugin. Uh, if you're familiar with PixInsight and adding scripts, it's uh, basically adding in a URL and then it just loads it into the software. So again, free, amazing. And then we'll go to the Solar Toolbox, it's this one here. And then watch what you can do here. This is where we can add color to a mono image like magic. So we'll just uh, make sure we're on this image here and then start a real-time preview. Now I found that this goes a little bit slow because it's, I guess it's doing a lot all at once. So there's a, you know, a number of options here. The first one we'll do just so we can see it in color is go to color. It's going to apply this, this orange yellow kind of color to the sun that makes it look a little more um, you know, as, as the sun would be. Um, not really, it's, it's more of an artistic take, I suppose. Uh, and then you can adjust the, you know, the, the, the levels of it. Where are we at? 0.400 for green. Let's see if we move that up. Yeah, now it's a little more yellow. So I feel like somewhere in, in between there would be ideal. Maybe a little more. This is all to taste, you know. If we go to contrast enhancement, this one's fun. So it's gonna take a second, it's going to apply these default settings here. That's a little bit nuts, so we can uh, move the amount down a little bit. But I think you get the idea here. Basically all of these adjustments, sharpening, uh, are just so much fun to play with and you'll really have to play with it yourself to, to get uh, the image the way you want it. Um, but if we apply all these, we've sharpened it, we've colorized it. I didn't do any prominence boost because there really isn't any uh, notable ones on this particular image. It's going to apply this. All right, that's uh, doubled down on the preview. Okay, not bad. Look at that section of the sun. Pretty exciting. So if we look at some of the other ones I've done here, just to give you an idea. Um, this is one I put together where I actually took different sections of the sun at a time, at a, at a faster frame rate and built the image. A little bit of extra work there to kind of, uh, you know, merge all the seams and everything, but really amazing to see the sun as it was on, I guess that was July 29th. So just a portrait of our star. This is the only solar telescope I've ever used. So I can't speak to if it's better than some of the other options out there. What I can tell you is that a 76 millimeter aperture in a solar scope is absolutely huge. Sizes of 30 and 40 millimeter diameters are much more common. This is a single stack solar telescope, one Edelon filter. But experienced solar imagers seem to agree that this telescope provides double stack performance. The SolarQuest mount is super handy. I love that it's portable and battery powered. It's a perfect match for this scope, but it's a one trick pony and I can't imagine being able to justify the price if you already have a solid equatorial mount. I hope you enjoyed seeing my first solar telescope experience and what the Skywatcher Heliostar 76 H-Alpha Telescope is all about. Until next time, clear skies.